today's gospel reading, we hear how two disciples are transformed when a stranger opens the scripture to them and reveals himself as Lord in the breaking of the bread. The story of the road to Emmaus becomes our story in this Eucharist as we hear the word of God and recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And of your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves today to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throngs of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David said of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses, exalted at the right hand of God. He received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundations of the world, but revealed in the final time for you who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Are you the only 
visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and in word, before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, eyes were open and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scripture to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way, and how he was made to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. in today's gospel that show us where Christ is present in our liturgy. In the first place, the two disciples, Cleopas and his unnamed companion, starting their journey between Jerusalem and the village called Emmaus, which is about seven miles. They were quite discouraged. They thought Jesus was dead, and still they were talking about him. And then, Jesus, who lived in their hearts, appeared before their eyes. Even though they did not recognize him, he was there, the risen Christ. Now, a similar reality takes place when we gather together in his name. Christ, our Lord, is there. Remember, Jesus said, For two or three of you are gathered in my name, I am there among you. It would not be good if we were not aware of him we did not experience his presence among us. Yes, in our very gathering in his name, God is there. The second place, Cleopas and his companion listening as the risen Lord told them what all the scriptures said about him. They were not listening to some lecture, but to God's plan for salvation. It's no wonder that their hearts were burning. The living Christ was interpreting the word of God for them. A similar reality took place just a few minutes ago when today's scriptures were read. Vatican II phrased it very simply, Christ is present in his word, since it is he himself who speaks when the scriptures are read. Do you believe that? Do you listen when the scriptures are read? The way Cleopas and his fellow disciple listen? When scriptures are proclaimed, God comes alive, for the risen Christ is speaking to us, and therefore, we must listen. The third place, the two disciples urged Jesus to stay with them, and 
While he was with them, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. St. Luke shows the risen Christ was doing exactly what he did when he multiplied the loaves, exactly what he did at the Last Supper. St. Luke then said, their eyes were open and they recognized him. Now a similar reality takes place every time we receive Holy Communion. The same Christ comes to us in what looks like a host, comes to us in our hand or on our tongue. The question is, do we recognize him? Do we thrill to the presence of Christ alive in us? This is my body given up for you. So there you have the three times where Christ is present in the liturgy. The gathering, the water, and the Eucharist. Our God is alive. Now, how alive are we? How strong is our faith? Last Sunday's Gospel, Jesus said to Thomas, Do you believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and believe. Remember the Gospel on Easter Sunday, when on the first day of the week Mary Magdala arrived at the tomb of Jesus early in the morning, and she found the stone had been removed. She probably thought, oh no, what else can go wrong? Jesus has been killed. Her hopes and dreams had been destroyed, and now apparently someone has stolen his body. So what does she do? She runs off to inform the other disciples. Then Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved ran and arrived at the tomb. But something was very odd. The burial cloths were neatly folded and the body gone. If Jesus' body was stolen, why would thieves in a hurry to get away take the time to unwrap the body and leave the valuable cloths behind? Finally, the light bulb goes off in the head of the disciple, and he is first to make the leap of faith. He saw and he believed that Jesus had risen, just as Thomas said in last week's Gospel. Remember what Jesus said to Thomas? Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and believed. We must always remember faith is a gift, a gift that only God can give, a gift that enables us to affirm without hesitation on God's word that Jesus is God's Son in human flesh, that he did actually die for us, that he came to life again, and that he is now gloriously alive. A living faith is the most precious gift that God has given us. Most precious because a living faith means God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit deep within us, enlightening our minds, strengthening our wills, inflaming our hearts. It is with such faith that our hearts also can burn in us like the disciples. So then, let our hearts be joyful because our Easter gift, that special grace won on Calvary, moves us to believe that God is alive. To say that and mean it means that you and I are alive, alive in the very life of the risen Christ. And remember, this also, God never promised us a trouble-free life, but he did promise to be with us in the dark times, especially times like now, during these difficult days, during this terrible worldwide pandemic that we are going through. He is with us to give us hope when we are afraid, when we are anxious and worried and feel helpless. So let's keep our eyes on Jesus during this coronavirus pandemic and we'll surely find peace and hope in this troubled world. The Lord has risen indeed, and yes, he is alive in us right now and will always be. Alleluia.
Together now we join in professing our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence and with faith, we place before God our needs and prayers. For the church throughout the world, may Jesus our head grant us reconciliation and unity. Let us pray to the Lord. War to our nations, with every peace in every place experiencing violence and war. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those saddened by loss or discouragement, may the promises of the risen Lord lift them from their despair. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this community who struggle with their faith, may God's word open their hearts and nourish them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those working to curtail the spread of the coronavirus, that God will give them insight, protect those caring for the sick, and guide those who are researching cures and vaccines. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our brothers and sisters in Christ who have died, may they rejoice in the presence of our Heavenly Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now for those intentions that are silent in your hearts. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we place our prayers and our needs before you today with great confidence. We know that you will hear and answer them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
to your faithful soul. Be pleasing to you. Ask our Lord to have your way. Give us strength and comfort. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb, once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we would be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. And for also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul will be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Allow me once again to just take two minutes 
to express our gratitude to all those who help make our weekly broadcasts possible, to Deacon Lenny, our parish folk choir, John Nellis, and uh, all those who uh, support in any way uh, this special project of our parish. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank all those who by mail or email have sent us their congratulations on and their appreciation uh, for the broadcasts that we have been providing since the fifth Sunday of Lent. It's most appreciated each and every time we receive a letter or an email to know that what we do, uh, even though our community cannot be together formally, provides some comfort, some attachment to our parish church. Uh, I'm most gratified each and every week that I, I could look at the YouTube um, spot for our parish and see how we have grown over the course of these weeks. Uh, last week, our Mass brought over 600 hits, Divine Mercy over 500. We are very grateful that so many of you take your time to be with us. Secondly, we encourage you, if you know someone who would want to uh, be part of our Mass, give them our website. Allow them to come and to pray with us, at least in this way. Secondly, I'd like to thank all those who continue to support our church by your weekly offering. To me, it's, it's gratifying that so many people by mail or by dropping their collection envelopes off at the mail slot in the office door, you know, continue to be mindful of our mission here at the parish of St. Cyril and Methodius. I'm truly grateful for your help, truly grateful for your support. And last but not least, we continue to pray for, your, for you and your world that God may keep it safe and provide your, his protection to you at this very difficult time. We certainly will pray for you. We ask, please, that you also pray for us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God.